Some people who smoke all their life do not develop cancer, while other people who smoke the same amount do. Why is that? It seems that some people are more sensitive to the effects of lifestyle on the development of cancer than others. This is what we call genetic susceptibility. Somebody is more vulnerable to develop cancer because of his or her genetic makeup. Did you know that you are 99.6% the same as your family, friends, neighbors and colleagues? The DNA of any two people on earth is 99.6% identical. Only 0.4% in each of us is different. That doesn't seem like a lot, but this 0.4% is why we look different. So, your height or the color of your hair and eyes, for example, is all determined by this small part of DNA. This 0.4% is also the reason that there are differences within our body that we cannot see. For instance, there may be differences in how we metabolize our food, and all these differences are there because a small part of our DNA varies. Some variations in the DNA, which we also call genetic variants, occur often in a population. These common genetic variants usually do not lead to a large increased or decreased cancer risk by themselves. However, they may contribute to the development of cancer because they interact with diet. So, these genetic variants influence how diet leads to an increased or decreased cancer risk. This is one type of a diet gene interaction. An example of this type is the relation of alcohol to esophageal cancer. Heavy alcohol consumption is associated with an increased esophageal cancer risk. This association, however, differs between populations because of a genetic variant. When persons have this genetic variant, they have trouble breaking down alcohol within their body. A certain compound builds up and at a certain point becomes toxic. Due to this buildup, the persons with the genetic variant have a higher risk of esophageal cancer than the persons without this genetic variant. Other variations in the DNA, which we call mutations, do not occur often in a population. However, when people have a mutation, they have a very high risk of cancer. Having this high risk doesn't automatically mean that somebody will develop cancer. There are still differences between persons with the same mutation. Some people do indeed get cancer at an early age, while other people do not get this cancer during their lifetime. This may be because diet has an influence on how the mutation leads to an increased risk of cancer. This is another type of a diet gene interaction. An example of this type is the association between BMI and the development of cancer in persons with Lynch syndrome. People with Lynch syndrome have an inherited mutation in certain mismatch repair genes. Because of this mutation, they have a very high risk of getting all types of cancer, and especially colorectal cancer. It has been shown that a higher BMI is associated with a higher colorectal cancer risk in men with Lynch syndrome. This relation between BMI and colorectal cancer risk is also seen in the general population. However, the association between BMI and colorectal cancer risk is much stronger in the Lynch syndrome population than in the general population. So what can you conclude after watching this video? Well, what I wanted to make clear to you is that diet can influence the action of genes. And genes can influence the action of diet. We call this a diet-gene interaction. Together, diet and genes are major players in the occurrence and progression of cancer.